You are listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. The potato peelings in the sink did not turn into vodka as I had hoped. I only start to need a drink. After the liquor stores have closed I heard you changed your name again But don't you change your hair It was the only thing I liked about you In the end La la la. What? Tell me when we start. Oh, you were always talking. Oh. We're always on. So oh. keep that microphone near your head. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And this uh, and this podcast is not over. People listening, the podcast is over when the Matoid plays party time. Because too many times we go, all right, that's it. I think we got enough. That's the podcast. And then we pause, and then we start talking again, and it ends up 20 minutes longer. So I don't know if people shut it off going, hey, you said it was over. No, wait till Because we might get fucked up after this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I want to do another 20 minutes of drunk stupidity. Uh huh. So right. people, yeah, it's not over until you hear the Matoid sing, party time. Look up some other Matoid shit. That's why he's got fucking great stuff on YouTube. What's what the where he does the the yes Google search the Matoid uh, Love Boat. He does a cover of the Love Boat theme song. That's fucking great. And al- it's a video. He also does uh, Lionel Richie. Oh yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah, and Dance and Queen. And I I like Funeral Pyre. Yeah, Funeral Party. Funeral Party. Yeah. And Mishka's got some of my favorite songs ever. Mishka Shubali, who opens the. Uh, podcast oh i know did you well you know i started a podcast right around the same time you did and it turned out we were like choose we chose the same song accidentally no shit yeah because i was like man this would be a good song to start on and so then i was like oh doug's got a podcast now and i listened to him like that's the same goddamn song (laughs) well it was is between that or the other one which is the best opening line of all time is the potato peelings right sink exactly so I know I love that album, which is now the opener. Is that what we used? Now? Yeah, I know. I don't listen to my podcast, yeah. people. It's only been four months. N- not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> not a fan. Uh, you know, can someone keep uh, James Inman here in a uh, hard cider? <laughs> Will you order him another hard oh, cider? God. Get him two. Yeah, might as well get Bingo. Can you go grab like? Yeah. Just grab like four of them because the crowd's going to start filling up in there and we don't want to open the door. If they got a six barrel, just wheel it back here. Is it only on tap? Well, here it is only on tap. Okay, that's fine. All right. Yeah, James Inman is here with me in Kansas City pre-show a fucking seven o'clock show it just doesn't seem right does it really start at seven yeah, or are they just trying seven. to get people in early no it's an improv they don't Who the fuck, fuck around a seven o'clock show people that want to leave don't you have like i've always said that that's the problem with the improvs is there's no mr improv that's counting the receipts in the back afterwards <laughs> no one here gives a fuck if the club makes money so they want to get it started get the fuck out get their tips i don't blame them yeah, but don't you can't you ask him for like some kind of green? Like, like if there was a, if you're working for the guy, if you're that uh-huh. guy that's making the money is in the room, he wants to make people wait and drink, and he doesn't want the show to start till two hours late, and he wants mm-hmm. to go long and fuck off because that's more drinks in the till. Yeah, but you're like a rock star now, so you can like order stuff for your green room, like jelly beans or you know. But what you do I'm is... I'm talking about the quality of the show. I'm not talking about me. I'm t- saying that... Yeah. Right, right. Oh, I thought Tabs you were are about- going down at 35 minutes in. And oh, want yeah. people to get the fuck out. Yeah, but can't you tell them not to do that? You're- I do to an extent, yes. Yeah. But I also don't want the fucking staff to hate me. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, you got fired from the improv years ago, didn't you? Ah, there... uh, nah, it's a gray area. <laughs> they canceled the date. I think didn't they cancel a date? They canceled some dates, and uh, yeah, and I, again, you don't really know. Again, because you don't know who the guy is. You don't know who yeah. Mr. Improv is. Yeah. <laughs> so you hear a lot of stuff, and then it gets filtered through your management, uh-huh. and they soft touch it. And- yeah, I know. Well, they, they rarely book me, uh, but they have my bio and headshot still on their goddamn website. So if you type in James Inman into Google, you'll get improv. Here's one of the comics that plays here. I'm like, you guys never fucking book me. What do you got my bio on your goddamn website for? Who does book you anymore, James? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Fucking, I have to. I book myself and I use a fake name. That's how I get bookings. <laughs> do, do I mean? Do you still work for the creepy guy here in Kansas City? Uh, not. Well, I did a while ago, but I, I didn't. Stanford yeah, and Sons. It left a bad taste in my mouth, so I haven't really been there. But they're moving out of the place and going across, or on Broadway. He's he's moving because the rent went up or something. I don't know. But last time I I went out and did something with Brett he, at a fucking uh, goddamn. Uh, it was a country club. That was James what, Inman. James Inman is uh. Well, he's legendary in the business. You started here in Kansas City, then moved to right. Seattle, basically made a name for you. Or that's where I met you, was in right. Seattle. No, we met, we met in Vail. All right, but I mean, you right. were in Seattle right. at that uh, time. Yeah. And you would just uh, legendarily go up, and we'd feed you shots on purpose before you'd go up, because we know you'd fucking break down <laughs> and lay on your back and kick and scream about the fucking, you know, something, all this socialist shit and killing the landlords. I remember the first time I worked with you in Little Rock, Arkansas. I know. <laughs> and we had to stay on some in, in the owner's condo with the owner. And you were fighting with your wife at the time on the phone, screaming and yelling because your landlord had uh, deemed it necessary for you to pay the rent. It was, it was something like we're, we're day late and she fucking... No, you were weeks or months well, late. It was Christmas Eve and she called me for the rent. I'm like, bitch, it's Christmas It wasn't Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Yes, it was. She called me on Christmas Eve once for the rent. Oh, once. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I wouldn't spend... I, I've had some bad times in this life, but I was never spending a fucking Christmas Eve in Little Rock, Arkansas. Yeah, but that's when I realized you were fucking with my, he- my head because we got in some argument about... I don't know what it was, but it was like racism or something. And you're like, I don't see anything wrong with the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And you but just it's kept so easy me, to wind you up like that. And I you'd didn't believe know, it every time. I didn't know that you were fucking with me. And it's just like constant with you. It's like constantly, what can we do to fuck with James Inman? It's endless. And, and all your friends are like, hey, Doug fucks with James. Let's fuck with him, too. It must be cool to fuck with James. And so then I got all your fucking fans that are constantly pranking me and doing all kinds of shit. It's, it's, it's driving me crazy. <laughs> but, but you're so ripe for it. I mean, I in Little Rock, you were fight, yelling at your wife, not at her, but on her behalf. Because uh-huh. the landlord was asking for the rent, which you were like so late that you go, how do, do people get away with that? Because, yeah, I'm a week late on a fucking Ugh. gas bill as a decent customer. They shut my shit off. I go, oh, oh fuck, God, I never really? get the no- There's, a, there's a procedure, though, where, where people who know how to game the system go, look, if we're here for a certain amount of time, it's going to take them two years to get rid of me. And if anyone knows how to game the system, no. it was Inman. In Seattle, no. If, I blame my ex-wife because she fucking... She, it turned me on to Marx, uh, but um, <laughs> I'm not Carl, really Carl a socialist. Marx? He would li- he would live with no no electricity for months. I had my electricity turned off one time. All right, and that was <laughs> just to see what it was. You like. lived in like a Buddhist monastery is- just because it was free. No, uh, I that is not true. <laughs> I went to a Buddhist monastery because I was studying Buddhism and I wanted to meditate. It and you happened to be homeless at the time. Well, so it worked I mean, out. No, I wanted to. No, it wasn't technically. It was in between couches. <laughs> All right. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going on a spiritual quest. So I went to a Buddhist monastery. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. You got anything wrong with that? No, Mr. it's Atheist? just it was a, again one of those perfectly timed things where I was well, he's kind of homeless as this story as he was I telling. I took something that sucked and turned it into lemonade. Well, that, right. How is your explanation of what happened different from what Doug said? Because he always spins it to where I'm the fuck up. Oh, he cut to the chase. Yeah. No, got it. No, he exaggerates how fucked. I'd up like my to life see is. how that ended. Like what? the Buddhist monastery thing, where they like, how do Buddhists tell James <laughs> Inman like, you got to get the fuck out? <laughs> bald, bald guys in gold robes throwing his few possessions out the second story yeah. window. <laughs> that sucked, man. That was two months of not jacking off. It was like, oh my god, it was hard. <laughs> it was fucking. Finally, I mean, it was it was really really weird when I finally got back into normal society. I couldn't deal with shit. See, I don't think you've ever been part of normal society because <laughs> oh. we're talking twenty years back, and your your life is not that much different, right? You've it just did, been yeah. kind of a, a, a wandering, right? Yeah, vagabond. Don't we, don't we all wander? What do you mean? Who doesn't wander in life? We're all like born, and we wander around on the planet, and then we fucking die. I mean, it's not like you actually think I'm, you know where you're going. I mean, I'm just saying, but like when this. We knew each other in those kind of situations. We were younger men. Mm -hmm. We were young guys. And it's a, a whole lot different living on someone's couch or in their uh, carport when you're 28 oh. than it is now that we're... Well, you're lived, over 50 now, I lived right? in Randy's closet for a year and a half. <laughs> I remember fucking, that. I was a, it was a, it was a big closet, but it was big enough to put a bed in there. And that's the only... The whole bed took up the entire closet. So you walk in my room, there you're on the bed. That's why I think it's kind of fantastic <laughs> and horrifying that you've never really changed. Sounds more like a swinger's sex dungeon. Yeah, it was. It was wall-to-wall <laughs> -wall mattress. I remember a... uh, Inman and I, I think we were working in either Portland or Seattle, and you were doing the San Francisco comedy competition. Right. Uh -huh. So you had done the first week mm -hmm. and you moved on, but the second week there were two preliminary weeks. weeks. So you had that middle we that second week off, oh. you were coming up to work with me. Right. Or I was working the week after you at Harvey's. Either way. Yeah, you, uh -huh. you had the week off. from. So you're coming up. You're going to take the Greyhound bus yeah. after the last night in Sacramento, California. Uh -huh. and, and, oh, fuck. You're going to tell this story? I was, oh, was, was kind of right. leading you into it. <laughs> <laughs> so I... Uh, what the fuck? Well, you get on the bus, and they said you couldn't get on the bus because no, you're drunk. I, mean, I, I was coming. I was going to Portland. I was on the bus. Sacramento it, to Portland. No, no. It was it was kind of like I was coming up from L.A. or something, and the bus stopped in Sacramento, and they said I had a five-hour layover. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to go get something to drink. So I got a bottle of gin, and I started drinking it. And I wasn't too drunk. I was just standing in line. I mean, I could function. But the guy smelled my breath, and he's like, sorry, sir, we can't let you on the bus. Your breath smells like alcohol. I'm like, fuck, the entire bus smells like a heated turd. Who gives a fuck? It's a goddamn bus. It's not like you're flying a plane, you know? And he's like, sorry, can't let you on. And uh, I'm whatever, they, they kicked me out, right? And it's the last bus of the night. And it was the last bus of the night, and so that's when I realized, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to, well, I didn't have money for a hotel, so I'm like, I'm going to have to sleep on the fucking street. So <laughs> Wait, wait, you're missing a part. What? Because you figure, hey, fuck it, I, I'm stuck out all night. I might as well go get another bottle. Oh, right. But uh -huh. you go to, so you go to yeah, the liquor yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yes. I, so you finished the first bottle of gin. Right, right. So I had like $20 left. And I go in uh, to buy another bottle of beer. And um, the guy goes, sorry, sir, we can't, I can't sell you alcohol. I'm like, why? He goes, because you're homeless. I'm like, I'm and not I'm homeless. I just got kicked off the bus. This is how I dress. I dress this way. Like, it's, I'm, you know, like, fuck it, you know? So so then he had to tap beer outside so, like a 16-year-old. No, no. So then I see this guy walking down the street who looked normal. I didn't know he was homeless because he was dressed nice. I Nicer go, than you. Dude, <laughs> here, give, here's 20 bucks. Go inside and buy buy some booze and uh, you know and we'll drink or whatever. He goes in and buys a goddamn fucking uh, slim jim and takes off running with my twenty bucks. <laughs> and I'm like, that was my last twenty dollars. And so like I'm fucked. So now you have no alcohol. Now I have no alcohol, no, no money, 
and I'm on the fucking street. And so I went up, went up to another homeless guy. I go, where the fuck do you guys sleep around here? Oh, we sleep in the park. I go to the park. The park is being resodded. So it's just dirt. <laughs> so I slept in an unsodded park <laughs> on the fucking dirt and rocks. Fluffy dirt. Yeah, it was it was fucking dirt. So I woke up, you know, and I'm like, fuck well, this. Well, wait, now, now, now you... Oh, yeah, I couldn't find a bathroom. The, wait, no, you're sleeping in the park, and then the cops approach you. Right, and they say, <laughs> they go, um, <laughs> they go, okay, you can sleep here, but we just want to tell you that there's a, there's a guy on the loose in the neighborhood, and he's stabbing homeless people. <laughs> what a rash of homeless You, you see a guy with a green shirt on, you know, that looks like this, give us a call. I'm like, I'm, I don't have a phone, I can't... Anyway, so I'm sitting there going, I'm going to get stabbed in the fucking park because I got kicked off the goddamn bus. This is not, I was not homeless. I got kicked out of the bus station. If yeah. you were homeless, it was for hours. It was, well, it was really yeah. just It was enough the, hours that when he a, went to take his shit, oh, they considered him homeless because <laughs> that's customers only. And he, he, if you're not a customer, you don't have money to be a customer. You're homeless. So when he couldn't take his shit in any of the local establishments. Theoretically, you did buy the I, Slim Jim. No, no. the other, <laughs> No, I, so I was broke. And so I went to this g- gas station and I said, can I use your bathroom? He goes, no, you have to buy something before you use our bathroom. I'm like, fuck it. So I went back outside. I couldn't find a place to take a dump, so I fucking shit on the sidewalk. And I was like, well, if I'm going to shit on the sidewalk, I went up in front of a (laughs) a Masonic temple, and I took a dump right in front of the goddamn Masonic temple. Because the Freemasons secretly control the world, (laughs) and he really wanted to make a political statement. (laughs) Quite a commentary. And And wipe my ass on a thrifty nickel. So... (laughs) And then I found out later that the Freemasons are actually pretty cool. And you know what? <laughs> you ended up winning the San Francisco comedy competition. Oh, yeah, I did, yeah. And then, yeah, I had some money for a little while. Not very, very long. No. Ex-wife spent it all. So. Did you ever have, like, a good-paying job? Yeah, was before ex- I got into comedy, I, had a, I worked at a factory. Yeah, it was, was a, I can't imagine a flush Inman. Dude, I used to yeah. Like the drinks for all my friends brand of Inman. He's looked like this, this outfit, from the Kenworth hat to the. the he he swears boots. that's the same Kenworth hat that he's had for yes, twenty some years. I bought it. I'm just, it's I got Aspergers or something. They I have to have the same clothes or. I, Why do you have to have something to be sensible with your clothing choices? Because I'm just stuck. If I, it's like. It's like a good luck charm or something. Well, then why do you blame it on some kind of a disease? I don't, I don't get it. Uh, I don't know. I was, my girlfriend Did told not, me an affliction. I'm sorry. My, I, I was told I was diagnosed with Aspergers or something. Didn't I have to mail that hat back to you from somewhere? Yes, I left it at your party because we we're. I was out there and I fucking left my hat somehow. I, pro- I probably uh, was holding it. Hostage as a security yeah, deposit. You, fucking, you guys were hiding my goddamn chewing tobacco, and I started going, "Who's hiding my chewing tobacco?" And everyone's like, "Quit bitching, James. You're stupid. No, you're a paranoid freak. That's it. Nobody's hiding your chewing tobacco." The whole week I couldn't find it, and at the end of the week, you know what? Meat Sticks goes, "Yeah, Jim, James, we've been hiding your chewing tobacco. Yeah, so you were." But lying you, to you me. were coming after me. First of all, James Simmons no. comes down for the, was it Fourth oh, of July? Jesus. It had to be Fourth of July. Uh, it was, was summer. So- no. Yes, yes, it was. It was summer, Fourth yeah. of July. Uh, so so <sighs> James comes down. Is I'm going to make it to your Super Bowl party. I found a cheap ticket. He shows up with a one-way ticket. <laughs> thinking that he, he's going to sell uh, no, no. Vicodin out of his pocket. He had, like, spare Vicodin no. in his... L- l- no, it wasn't. In, no. in his pocket lint. And he goes, well, I figured I'd just sell these and get a the bus ticket back. Go, There's no bus. There's no Greyhound back bus. Back to Kansas City from Bisbee? Yeah. I don't know. I thought you wanted me to come or something. It was I did like want you to come. But... Like, James, just get here. And I'm like, all right, I'll just fucking get there. And I'll figure out how I'm going to get back when I get there. I didn't have a plan where I was going to sell drugs to fucking leave your, you know, I don't know. Just I don't plan shit out. You don't plan shit out. Yeah. You, just you realize everyone pl- who went to that party bought round trip tickets? 
Those are you, smart people. I look just just letting you know. So just taking what? a temperature of the room. Like, it's, it's fucking, it's overrated to be planning shit all the time. You know, I I don't think you really have to fucking look ahead. I mean, it's like who knows what's going to happen in the future anyway. You don't know the future. You don't know what's going to happen. So fuck it. Why plan shit? <laughs> Why plan shit when you, I'll just show up there and eventually, if they want me to not be there, they'll have oh, to move God. me. You know, um, I can easily make fun of you. I have, I have a Doug Stanhope story. I always thought this was funny. When you lived in L.A. before you were famous or somewhat famous, uh, I'd go, I, I'd go stay at your place, right? Uh, because I had, some, I had to do an audition somewhere. And uh, I get in your apartment, and there's no fucking computer. This is right when computers first start coming out. I'm like, Doug, why don't you have a computer? He's like, oh, I don't need one. I'm like, dude, you can send email. And he goes, I don't need to send email. You know, and so I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking, how can I convince him? Dude, you can fucking look up conspiracy shit online. Why don't you get a goddamn computer? Oh, I don't need, I read books, I'll buy a book or something. I'm like, so I'm sitting there going, Wait a second. You can steal music off a of Napster. Get a fucking computer. You can download free music. I don't listen to music that much. And I'm sitting there going, <laughs> what can I say that'll make him get a fucking computer? And then I realized, oh, you can get dog porn. A fucking video of a woman fucking a dog. And Doug goes, really? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and so next time I stayed at his house, he had a fucking computer. It was like doing all that shit. Oh, that was another time I had to fly back home. No, <laughs> <Never that's... anybody. laughs> I know. I remember I was uh, dating a, a girl that was uh, f- the, f- Christine Hodge from Head of the Class, and she had gone out. She was like, uh, she would like just absolutely <laughs> rape, uh, like the what do you call them, the premiere parties and stuff like that. She'd go to the, all these premiere parties, and then at the end, she'd go, "Hey, are you gonna?" Uh, you gonna throw away that shrimp? <laughs> she just say take all his shit. Well, one night she got visibly drunk. She wasn't a drinker and stole a bottle of Jim Beam from behind uh, the the behind bar. the bar. Yeah, and uh, it made the gossip page in the L.A. Times. It said uh, like a B-level actress didn't say her name was spotted uh, klepting a bottle of Jim Beam, and so I cut that out and I put it on the bottle of Jim Beam, which she gave to me because she doesn't really drink. And I had that, like, sitting up on a mantelpiece. And an Inman comes to stay with me, and I wake up, and that thing is, like, one quarter. No way. Yeah, Are you, you serious? Dr- yeah, no. Yeah, you drank my fucking no, trophy. I remember that. No. Of course you don't remember <laughs> it. You drank three quarters that. of a bottle of Jim Beam. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't remember I don't that. even know what you were spiraling out for that no. time, but you were, I think you had come out to stay with someone else, and you guys got into a big alcoholic fight, like, uh, shut up, little man, the two of you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then you had to come stay at my place. And- uh, yeah, it was a, well, it's a long story, but yeah, I, don't, I just don't like LA. That's what, you moved down there. I just, I didn't move down there. I stayed in Seattle, so... I'm, well, I'm, and now you don't like it. You moved to Bisbee. Yeah, I'm not saying you should have stayed. I just I, I'm trying to remember the circumstances where I had to come pick you up at someone's house because he was going to call the cops or no, some fucking. Yeah, it nightmare. was a it was a comic friend of mine from Kansas City. He's like, uh, dude, you got to get down to L.A. You got to come down here. It's cool. And so I'm like, I don't have the money. He goes, dude, just fly down here. I'll buy your ticket back. So I was like, cool. So I fly down there. And um, uh, we get in an argument. He's like, get out of my apartment. I'm like, fuck it. Whatever. And now I'm like, thanks, dude. You fucked me. I flew down here. You said you're going to buy my ticket back. Now you're being walked out by security again. No, he was he was a goddamn pothead. It's a long story. We are just, Chaley and I were uh, talking. About the last time you played Coots, which uh, up in oh, Anchorage. God. You have a couple of legendary stories in Anchorage. Uh, not only the last time he played Coots, the last time he will ever perform oh. at Coots. <laughs> Do you want, I told you the exact fucking story of what happened, and you always turn it around like I'm the asshole. You well, know? No, I, I, don't, I don't say you're the did asshole. You ever, did I ever tell you the exact story of what exactly happened? You told me your version. Tell me. The, oh, Doug has, right. Doug's heard parts of my story, but My go ahead. version. Let me hear your version. Okay, first of all... <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. Whatever I say, you're not going to believe me. 
No, I Chilkoot Charlie's is like the the biggest bar in Alaska. It's as monstrous. We've talked 43 about forty three years old. Listen yeah. to the podcast. We've talked about All it. Right. So uh, Greg Chaley here. Uh, he uh, manages or books and it. he would book the comics book up the there. Comics, yeah. Okay, so all right, so I'm there with Jessica. Remember Je- Messica? Yeah, uh, right. She was just happened to be in Alaska at the same time, and she came and she's like, "Oh, I want to watch your show." I'm like, "She worked right. for Fisheries, I believe, Fishing right, Games. Right. She did some stuff." So she was there, and we were both drinking at the show. I wasn't drunk. I wasn't obnoxious. And it was one of those things where, you know, she buys a shot or let's do a shot. So I drink this shot. You know how sometimes it goes down your throat wrong. And I was like, oh, I got to throw up. So there was this giant trash can not behind the bar over, you know, just three feet away. I go over to the trash can and just kind of went like that. And I'm like, "Okay, I'm all right. This bouncer sees me and he goes, come here. I'm like, what? He goes, we got to kick you out because if you throw up in the bar, you're kicked out. I'm like, all right, cool. So I follow him out. He didn't have, there was no violence. I wasn't being a dick. I get outside and I realize I'm kicked out of the bar because I threw up in the trash can. James Inman is a 50 something year old, uh, long term alcoholic. I wasn't 50. Don't think he's like some uh, fucking pipsqueak girl at a bachelorette right, party right. that didn't expect that alcohol to taste so harsh. <laughs> right. And no, so you, anyway. you don't puke when you, you're not drunk. <laughs> it was a small puke. All right. All right. Finally, you're calling it puke. All right. All right. So it was. You want some more? I can't. Here, put that right there. All right. That's yours. Because I've got to move my hand around. Let him finish the story. Mm. I thought he was reaching for a beer. All right. I'm sorry. Here's the deal. So I'm a nice person. I don't. I don't become a dick until someone really becomes a dick to me. All right. So I was like, okay, cool. I threw up in the bar. The rule is you get kicked out if you're, you know, if you throw up in the bar. So I'm outside. It's freezing fucking cold. Not exactly a fucking, you know, Stalinist Russia kind of rule. You vomit in the bar. Seems you probably sensible. should go. Seems right, sensible. Go ahead. So they walk so, you out. Um, the guy, the, the bouncer walks me out and I go, um, yeah, um, you know, that girl I was with, could you tell her that I got kicked out of the bar so, you know, we can go somewhere else or I can walk her to her car or whatever, you know, she's there by herself, not knowing why I got kicked out because she didn't see the whole thing transpire. And the guy looks me dead in the eye and goes, nope. I'm like, excuse me, what? I'm like, can you just tell her that you kicked me out of the bar, that that girl that I was sitting with? He's like, nope, sorry, you're kicked out. Don't have to do shit for you right now. I don't care, not my problem. And I'm, I'm looking at the guy, I'm like, really? And that's when I said, did you know that I'm actually the comedian here? I was on stage tonight, I'm going to do a show tomorrow and the next night. If you want me to be funny tomorrow, maybe you better go get that girl right now. If you don't fucking get that girl, I'm not going to be funny tomorrow. And so the guy, you see this look on his face like, uh, okay. So he goes in, gets the girl, and brings her back out. You know, I actually pulled out my license. I, I, I go, here's my driver's license. You see that name right there, James Inman? That's on my driver's license. That's me. You want me to be funny? You fucking go get that girl right now. And okay, I, I'm wondering how this leads into you getting f- fired from ever performing there again. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so then uh, I do the... Oh, <laughs> so it gets back to the manager. And so the manager and everyone was there watching my show because they're freaking out that I was going to suck that night. This was Friday. Keep in mind, I have comic friends that have had to been physically carried off of the stage for being so drunk that they could they didn't know that their show was done. That had to be, and they got booked back. Right, right. Anyway, so this got back to the manager somehow. This bouncer must have really said I was a dick or something. Anyway, the manager shows up and he's watching my show. He looks at me in the eye and he's like, you going to have a good show tonight? I'm like, dude, don't worry about it. It was just, it's no big deal. I was just fucking with that guy. I wanted to get my girlfriend, at, but, but you know, whatever. I go on, I have a great show. He's like, oh, no problem. That's cool. And then the next day it was like, well, this is the last night. There wasn't very many <laughs> reservations. There was only about 12 people in the audience. And I'd kind of been drinking pretty much all day long. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to just have, I'm going to dress up like a clown, put on some makeup. 
I'm going to have the worst show I could possibly have. And so just just because that guy pissed me off so much. And so I went on stage and I just started sucking. I started saying the most outrageous shit I could think of. And they were actually laughing, you know, and but it pissed off the manager because he knew I was doing, you know, I was dressed in a clown suit. I had my clown shoes on. I was drunk. I was just talking stupid shit. And they turned the mic off on me. <laughs> and I'm like, after how long? About 10 minutes. And they just said show's over? Yeah. And there, but there was only about 12 people in the audience. I'm like, what does it matter? It's fucking so, 12 so, people. So there's a lot more earlier in the week, and, and then the word of mouth spread? Uh, <laughs> whatever. I'm not that famous. No, it was just a slow night. But anyway, I mean, I had a good slow shows. Saturday. I had good shows. You the had a good whole Wednesday, week. Thursday. I, what was it? Thursday, Friday, by, Saturday? By Saturday, uh, the whole town knew it was <laughs> afoot. Back I, then, I think it was uh, Tuesday through Saturday. Yeah, f- I don't know. For some reason, I wasn't thinking, you know, Shaylee books the club. It wasn't like on my brain, you know? Okay, because it's uh, like. The way I heard the end of the story uh, when Jaylee was talking to his uh, gal pal or on the phone was uh, was a security escorted you to the condo before they drove you immediately to the airport. Well, I mean, yeah. After, That's not because no, they don't like off, clown suits. No, he turned off the microphone, and so then I ranted another 10 minutes about him turning off the microphone. Lights off, too, and at Whatever. one point, it was uh, the, the man. No, if I, if yeah, I can. Yeah, go ahead. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Chaley's going to You weren't in. there, though. No, no, but I, I talked to everyone there. I was a the manager there, so I got... Right. you I talked got, to secondhand... You're getting it firsthand from me. No, your what version happened. I'm getting from you. It's correct. Correct. I, you know, correct. But I'll tell you, All right, uh, whatever. there's, there's really, enough you, people there. Okay, yeah. you know? Listen, James. All right, so what did you I, hear? I booked you. I right. wanted you to be right. Right. Okay. But it wasn't. <laughs> we all want it's, James okay, to be so right. Tell me what it's you not heard. what I heard. It's what every story was similar, was that you were on stage. You definitely you threw it in the ditch. But during the day, you came into the bar. Oh, right. I forgot oh. about that. Do you want to tell okay. that? Yeah, I'll let you. <sighs> Jesus Christ. It fucking... All right, so... The, the bar is open at about 10, 30, 11 every day, oh, 365 man. days of the year. The day bartenders, you've been a bar... Right. You've, you've worked in bars before, right, James? Yeah. You've worked security. You know what that's like. Yeah. Working with day crew, working with day regulars. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. I know exactly right. what it's so like what to happened? be a bouncer. And when I was a bouncer, I wasn't a fucking cunt like no, that guy. No, we went, all right, we're forget that. about that. We're past all right. That. No so, one's arguing that security uh, right, at Coos so, has a whole fucking flock of cunts. All right, it turns out the first night I was there, there's this girl there, and... <laughs> Do I have to fucking... No, Brenda's just, in the room. Do I have to tell the story? Do you want me to... No, I, do I'm, you know that I got laid in Alaska? Okay, all right. I didn't ask you to say anything. All right, so that um, wasn't coming up anywhere. I didn't even know that about was that. the biggest. <laughs> all right, fucking so oop. all right, here's the deal. I get there, I do the first show. This hot chick comes Does up. Does Brenda have to know that I had my whole hand in my own ass in the condo? <laughs> that wasn't where we were going, James. <laughs> you want the story? So the first night, I meet this girl. She's hot. We end up fucking. All right. Second night, Jessica comes. It's a, can you edit out her name, by the way? Wait Second a minute. Night, this what? is. Almost a different story. What are you talking you about? You said Messica was the Let, girl let him of, go. All right, all right. Well, I'm just, Messica it's... came into town the very next night, and I fucked her. All right? So <laughs> that day, I walk into the bar during the day, and I was like walking on air, feeling like I was this fucking god, because I just fucked two girls that week, and I was happy. I had a smile on my face. I was happy. I wanted to drink at the bar. Right, I walk in there with the f- huge smile, being nice and happy, and I order a drink with this fucking just a girl, a, a a bartender that had a perpetual frown on her face, who seemed like she was pissed at life her whole life, and she sees me happy. I order a drink. I sit down and I go, I can't believe it. This is a crazy, crazy week. I fuck it. I got. I fucked two women already this week. I mean, it's just I said. You that. said this to her. I don't know. Yes, I said something like I fucked two women this week. I can't believe it. I don't know why I said it. I just said it. All right. And so she gives me this look like, "Get out!" I basically, uh, you're not welcome here. And she took my drink away. And I'm like, "Oh my god, this woman's a con." I'm sorry. I told you that I fucked two people this week, and I just like fuck it. 
I think I called her a cunt, and I just walked out. You called both of the girls a cunt that were there. What one you, of them checks the ID at the door. The other one, whatever, Catherine, whatever. It was did, closer to a milf than a, a perpetual I bad I called face. the bartender a, a cunt. Yeah. Correct. Right. Was the they, quote not, didn't save it for your act if you're working and they on said, new material? Yeah, he, he, what you came, I think what they thought you were doing, James, I mean, in your defense, they thought you were probably trying to be funny with the, I got laid twice, I'm, I'm walking on air. And it, look, uh, let's, let's get this out in the open. The girl's a dyke, all right? She's a fucking lesbian. Who? The bartender. You could, just the way her fucking hair was cut, she looked like she could bench 300 pounds. She had fucking dyke fucking tattoos. She was a lesbian. She doesn't want men to be happy. I came in there. I was happy. I had the smell of pussy on my face. It just pissed her off. Okay? See, and when she goes, uh, you, you, you fucked two women. You know, you're an asshole. Took my drink away. And I'm like, fuck it. You're a cunt. Same. And I walked out. Was That's that your first story. drink of the day? Probably not. No. <laughs> so had, what? You had finished a bottle of wine before right. you came in. Yes, but I generally don't drink before my show. Or a bottle of wine before, before noon. After, yeah. look... Here's where I this lost. This is why it's never Inman's fault. Here's where I lost respect is when that fucking bouncer kicked me out and he wouldn't go in and get my girlfriend. I mean, it's just a danger thing. It's like, how is she going to walk home? I mean, it's, it's yeah. Messica. I mean, she's in a bar by herself. You know, what but I mean? he did. He did go in and get her though. After I told him who all I was, all right. But this is a girl that tell uh, me that is not a cunt thing to do. Tell me that is probably on a fucking list. After someone of vomits, whole shit. But wait a I minute, I vomited in a trash can. Okay, but you 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 understand that he did eventually go and get her for after you. After I told him who I was, after I threatened to have a shitty show. And, and by the way, it was more of, do you know who I am? No, that's no, my no. name. See, you that's just said how it. You spin it. You try to spin it that way. <laughs> you just said it. You pulled your after wa- his, look, your ID out of your wallet oh no, see, and this pointed. This is where you're fucking you, with me again. You just did. This is you just no. said it. Do you want which me to is, play the tape? Which back? is more of a cunt thing to do? Kicking someone out of the bar who wasn't really drunk or fighting or violent. And when the guy goes, can you tell uh, my girlfriend that you kicked me out of the bar so she can come out and we can go somewhere else? And he goes, no. Which is a bigger dick thing to do? That's, that is a big fucking dick thing to do. That's a and dick thing to do. And it's dangerous. And Messica could, who knows dangerous. what could have happened that girl, to her. First of all, Messica was up there working on the fucking fishing boat. Yeah. Like the most dangerous job in the world. She ain't no fucking uh, well, see, wallflower. To, yeah, you're just petunia. wilting me. <laughs> like, let's wind James up. or Yeah. So I pull out my, my driver's license. I go, this is me. I'm the comedian. Can you please go in and get... My girlfriend, because I'm gonna have a bad, bad show tomorrow if you don't go get her. So they did. So you, they shut off the mic. There's a last night. Last Saturday. night. Yeah. Last night. He well, what happened was he went home when they kicked him out of the bar during the day. It was a Saturday. Yeah. And when nice. he came back, he was in full clown garb. And this yeah. is uh, he was living behind the. Uh, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so he's he's a short walk. Yeah, the condo's so he, right behind the bar. He comes walking over as the clown. Comes, gets on stage, and I didn't know that he had planned to, to trash it, like that was premeditated, but he basically went up and said, ask me a question. Ask me questions. And he had, now we know how many people were there because we have people take numbers at the door. There were 60 people in the room that night. Oh, give me I know, a I know. You, first How of could all, 60 people be at one of your shows? I understand okay, that. Right, I right. understand that. When someone sees a fucking UFO, you know, most times people go, you're crazy. But when two or more people see a UFO, maybe there's more credibility or whatever. James, we L- keep listen, track. Listen, they I, were I, obviously James, pissed James. at me. I was there. There was no fucking 60 people in that fucking J- room. Not at James, the end. I, this is the not reason. The, end. The, yeah. the reason he's my tour manager. <sighs> Yeah. I get a, a hate mail, not hate mail, but a, a, a fan that was angry at the late start time yeah. of a show in Fargo, North Dakota. And I Nestor read the Tavern. email. She goes, and we, it was supposed to start at whatever. And we waited till whatever, and it never started. And we should get a refund. Uh-huh. And he goes into his book. He has the amount of time every comic did down to the minute. He has how many people right. were He has well, every detail. That night yeah. Because then you would have known how many people were there. Well, all right. Was it was definitely not sixty. I'll tell you this much: it wasn't twelve. It was probably about twenty. Then don't say it's twelve next time, you fucking Whatever. liar. So I'm exaggerating. <laughs> I, I, it's basically okay. the room is not full. Right. The room has got about no. twenty people in there. 
But it's it's a Saturday night. It was a. F- I, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. No, James, I fucking had we're a bad just trip. talking about this. Okay. W- when he went on stage, he said, <laughs> okay. "Ask me a question," and right. he was really like laying it on thick. I want give me a question, and whatever you know, it started with like, "Why are you a clown?" and stuff like that. I was like, "Fuck you!" You asked me a real question, and we've seen James yeah. do this, and that can be uh. funny for a little bit. And the guy who was hosting and managing that night uh, was a uh, manager that had been there for a long From time. Applebee's. He used to work at Applebee's. Probably. Probably. Yeah. You know, Everyone's right. got a past, right? Right. So he he knows comedy. He's he's gonna. You know what? I'll he let also him did go. Stand up. I'll, yes. Yeah. And I'll let him go. We'll see where this is going. Right. After about ten minutes. It was just him doing that, and you hear the scooting back of chairs, and some people are leaving, right? So he no, 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 no. Wait a second. First off, you weren't there. No, no, I'm, and no I, one fucking I'm not left. Nobody I was there. even walked out. Don't well, tell me you were not there. You're hearing a secondhand story from at just, least five different people. They hated me because I told the fucking James. I, 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 I'm just trying to get to the point where <sighs> from the transition from the stage. <sighs> to all right, the, I'll do this look, really quick. Of course, they're all gonna hate me. I called the bartender he, a cunt. They're gonna make up the fucking worst story. Believe he, me, we saw him fuck a bunny. We're we not. Him, we're not that organized, kids. Right. <laughs> We can't get people to agree on anything. So listen, he's he's doing this thing where right. he's not going to give the the mic away, which I think is hilarious. That he's on stage with the big floppy shoes and everything, and they're doing this like trying to grab the mic, and he can't get it. And then they decide that they're going to turn off the power or, or to the or turn off the yeah. The they turn the mic off, and I think they, the lights went down for a little bit, and that's when James fell off the stage. <laughs> you fell off the clown stage? shoes up, yeah. Oh, yeah, so you don't remember? So then, so then they're like, we got to kick you out, but first we're going to pay you. So they paid me. For the full week. For, right, whatever. Uh, yeah, well, okay. You, they get, I, I would have took whatever money they but No, I'm just saying, I don't right. want you to... to we, we still paid you, even though you, you really kind of ditched it that last night. Yes. For whatever I reason. Did, yeah, yeah. Okay. And they, so then, what? They paid me. I had my clown pants on. I put the money in my clown pants, and on the way... Back to the condo, it was slick as shit because it's Alaska. I fell down and the money went flying through the air. And I had to go walking, running around in clown shoes trying to pick up 50s and $100 bills in the fucking breezing wind. And you yeah. might not remember this, but I'll remind you because uh, Tracy, she told me today, the bouncers, one of them helped you gather the money. One of the bouncers that was escorting yeah. you back to pack up your no. things so they can fly no, you, the you know what? out of Alaska. <laughs> that did not happen. If you know, it's a detail whatever, that I, I would not have know, asked for. I, you know, I, would not, I don't really care because you know. It I'm just saying, there's, look, not, there's all, not such malice okay. there. If you got paid and the bounce staff was helping you get oh up there, and then they drove all you right. to the yes, airport. Yes, I am not. First of all, I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have all good right? stories. And some. <laughs> Times I get mad at people like that bartender pissed me off uh, with her attitude. When when someone's happy, you should be happy that they're happy. Yeah. So and, if, that, if and the, the bounce- bartender at ten thirty a.m. is not uh, welcoming as you is oh, as welcoming as you'd like. Make sure that the audience at eight forty five p.m. <laughs> that it was no part of it pays the fucking price. Yeah, save that full shot of vitriol <sighs> for the late show. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> like I could just tell. I mean, I, I, I thought it was unfair for the bouncer. It's totally fair for a bouncer to follow the rules and kick someone out if they throw up in a trash can. That's the rules. And I was like, no problem with that. And then I was like, can you go in and tell that girl that I got kicked out because she doesn't know. And he goes, nope. I'm like, what? You can't be serious. Uh, yeah, yeah. That that was like the height. You keep of going back to that, but the fact of the matter is, that's you explained what, who you were, and that then was, he did what you asked. And that was two nights yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. If I hadn't have explained who I was, he would have treated me just like a fucking loser. I'll and t- this I'll is t- the same James Inman that called me up after he had uh, had to go to jail for egging his neighbor's car. <laughs> jail. So, yeah. yeah, my neighbor lived downstairs. As she used a hate to play, crime. No, she played music in the morning, six in the morning, every morning. I had to listen to it. Finally, I well, I put a um, note on her door. Could you please turn the music down? And she never did. Or I'll egg your fucking car. Yeah. You chink Again. or something. No, 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 no. You want to hear that story? 
All right, I'll Wait, tell you. Is it a different egging of a car? At I a asked her to turn it down. She wouldn't turn it down, right? Well, first of all, yeah. he's, he has the perfect crime already in play where he leaves a note on her door uh, saying that I'm going to egg your, your car, car again in apartment 6B. Basically, <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, Put it in writing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I fucking egged her car. And um, after she didn't turn it down, after he left a note, no, he you're followed making, through. You're not let me tell the story, okay. but she always had loud music. One day, I fucking just out of the blue egged her car. Then she never turned the music down, even when I asked her. And that's when I put the note on her door that said, if you don't turn your music down, I'm going to egg your car again. <laughs> and that's when she said, oh, you've been the one egging my car. You're the one that egged my car. And she came up and knocked on the door with the note and said, did you put this on my door? I'm like, fuck yeah, you won't turn your music down at six in the morning. And she had an accent, so it sounded like she's from Eastern Europe. And she's like going, you know, like, like that. I'm like, look, go the fuck back to your own goddamn country and play the music as loud as you want. But here in America, come on, you know, fucking I'm your neighbor. It's six in the morning. And she took... Go back to your own fucking country as a racist slur. Told the cops, and they came to my door and said, uh, yeah, it's a hate crime. <laughs> I'm like, hate crime? What are you talking about? All I said was, I can't remember the exact words, but basically it was like, maybe they play music at six in the morning really loud in your fucking country. And he told me the story. Yeah, and that me, became a hate crime. He told me the story, and he says... And then I was in jail, and I don't have any money. All of his stories <laughs> anyway. I don't have any money. And so I had to call my dad for money to get me out of jail. And I go, would you get arrested for egging a car? Don't <laughs> yeah. they automatically call your parents? <laughs> <laughs> oh, See, half the time, I don't really know if you guys are making fun of me or if you're just We're like, having fun with you, sir. With me, yeah. But you're never I love you. there when the shit really happens. It's fucked up. I've been there when plenty of shit happened. I was there when you swore that I was had something to do with someone hiding your chewing tobacco. Which and it turned out I was right. And you what? didn't know what house we were in. In my neighborhood, the quietest fucking neighborhood in the world. And oh, it's three in the morning. Jesus and Christ. Inman's just walking up and down these quiet, homey streets screaming, Stand up! Where's one of those fucking dogs stand up living? I will go to every fucking door in the neighborhood. What? <laughs> yes. yes. That's when you were trying to find us. We were at that other house. It wasn't three in the morning, with, Doug. With the it was pool? like it was like five or six in the morning because it was already well, light. Whatever it was, because that's we already I, had the police happened? called on us at that other house. We stopped playing at that, three in the no, morning. You want the, yeah, tell that story. That's the one where you thought I was up to something no. that I wasn't. I was hosting a party for forty-five people, right? And you think that I'm no? I was, I was at the party. Tobacco. I was being nice, and some of the. <laughs> All the stories start with, I was at the party. Minding my own business. I was being nice. I was polite to everyone. Um, I put my fingers under the bartender's nose and go, guess who who got fucking lucky? And she took my drink away. I don't know. Okay. so Hold hold on, James. By the way, there's nothing wrong with the equipment. James has just put a golf ball size of chew in his mouth. That's why it sounds a little different on the mic. Okay. No, I just. And, oh, by the way, everybody, Shaley talks really fast, so you might want to slow it down when he talks because you're too smart. Yeah, that's really a talk too fast. This is an inopportune moment to throw that Shaley <laughs> hockey just, puck of chewing tobacco in your. Um, no, you can keep ahead. it in that. That's the only reason I make is, that this distinction. This is why I snapped at your party. Okay, I'm being nice. I'm there. I make friends with everybody. I don't. Here's another thing about me. I don't talk behind people's backs. All right. I don't say, I try not to say negative shit to someone until they really fuck me over, all right? So, it's like the third day of the party, I'm passed out on the couch, right? I wake up to the smell of some kind of fucking um, goddamn magic marker, I open my eyes, and there's a guy there standing there videotaping me, I'm like, what are you doing? And they're all laughing, ha 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 Yeah, they do tend to get a little infantile with the pranks sometimes. I, I, I go... What? And and they're like, go in the mirror. I look in the mirror. The fucker drew a swastika on my forehead and painted a dick on my face, which is high school bullshit. Yeah, that's true. Kind of like egg in a car. (laughs) Yeah, so I snap, and I probably, that was probably wrong to do. 
Um, and I'd never really gotten that mad in quite some time. And uh, anyway, they, they found a way to, to get it off. They got turpentine, they put it on my face, and they were able to get the fucking swastika off my head. I didn't want to walk around your party with a fucking swastika on my head. That's what I thought. I thought it was going to be on there with a permanent marker the whole party. There's James with the swastika on his forehead. <laughs> then they showed him the magic of soap and water. And so, no, it was turpentine. They, they, uh, one girl came, and she's like, we know how to get it off. We use this. It's fucking, it smelled like gasoline or something. Was that me and you or me and Renee? One of us had to bathe you in a bathtub once at the that Death Valley. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, me and Renee had to fucking give Someone you Someone took a, pictures. I see Yeah, we had to actually it. bathe you yeah. in a bathtub. <laughs> well, so he's had one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, um, I, I felt like, man, that was really fucked up thing to do no, oh this is what really pissed me off no one would tell me who did it which made me feel like oh it wasn't really a prank it was done out of real hatred and malice because if it was a prank they'd go yeah it was that guy ha 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 no everyone was keeping their mouth shut because they knew they were fucking doing it for real let's draw on james's face because we hate his guts all right so oh, no. anyway i finally um I knew that karma has a way of getting around, coming back. I think the only one I th ever worried that actually hated you, and he wasn't even at the party, was Norm Wilkerson used to, I think, take it way too seriously. Like that's he did that with whole... other comics though too. Norm him and Mitt Walsh had a had a thing. Too. I, I, that... yeah. But Norm is just a curmudgeon. I, I figured that that's just his personality. But that's but, kind of the one of the romantic things about loving you for this many years. I've always, is I've you're always, such yeah. a colossal oh fuck God. up I've, that I've, you see, just assume someone else is going to pay your way. I look, no, a, I don't. It's I, I don't assume people are going to pay my way. I that was the first conversation that when I was working with you in a Little Rock stand, and you're yelling at your wife about the landlord, going, "Why does she want money from us? She's got everything. We have nothing. She has a brand new car." That How was did, back when I you thought couldn't I was understand socialist. why a landlord deserved any money from you. That was back when I thought I was a socialist. God. The first person they killed in the communist revolution with the fucking landlords. Right, right. And that was stupid. I'm not a real socialist. I'm more of, um, I don't know what I am now, but but you've inspired me. Most of my friends who are libertarians have inspired me. I'm also inspired by Nietzsche. I'm inspired by the Buddha. All of those philosophies are about pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps, all right? So I'm not a fucking socialist. I mean, I kind of am, but I'm not. I mean, I'm open-minded. All my friends are libertarians. I'm open. I'm like you. You're more of a comedian than you are a libertarian. But um, the thing with Norm uh, is, he's just a fucking curmudgeon, and so he hates everybody. So anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't mean to get you off okay. track. All right, all right. I just uh, you, the people drawing swastikas on your head. And again, we've had some legendary parties in Death Valley where things do spiral, fucking way out of control. No authority figures. I or overreacted and I real apologized. Structure I felt really bad about it. But you, you freaked the fuck out too. One of those nights, you the were last on, night when yeah, you were, you were on, fucking yeah, I, you were on mushrooms and you you grabbed my skull and you're gonna crush my skull for some reason. Yeah, it was, uh, I think you were. Choking him? Yeah, I thought I was choking you, but either way, uh, that's, you know, it got to that point. That's when you were fucking wandering around my neighborhood, sh shrieking at the top of your lungs, tell me where Doug Stenup lives. And like, Inman's going to fucking have every neighbor out calling I the cops. I don't remember that. Like, I we did have the cops all the time. out earlier. Yeah, the we, well, yeah. No, the cops did. But then you would just, were, I forget what you were relentless about. Where you just couldn't see. Why, why, it was just one simple argument where you just couldn't see the point of how rude it was to do whatever you were doing. And I'm going, no, this is. And then yeah, I snapped yeah, yeah, and I what grabbed you I by don't the neck and I don't do that. When you, Sorry. Know, when you know that someone pranked me with the magic marker on the face, how come, since you like pranks so much, how come you didn't prank them back or find a way? Inman, I was hosting a party that was in two different houses on different streets yeah, yeah. for three days cooking food. I was yeah, doing yeah, I the thought... last thing I'm doing is sitting up at 530 in the morning to see who's drawn on Inman's face. Well, right. But I mean, or in the afternoon yeah, or yeah. whatever it was. Right, right. You well, saw anyway, it. I got the guy back because what happened was. Who um, was it? Well, I was I was doing something on YouTube and I see this video. James Inman. 
uh, drunk. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And it's the video of them after they drew on my face. The guy with the, the camera. Who was it? It was Joe Stats. That's oh. who uploaded the video. I was like, motherfucker, now I know who you fucking are. And you're a guy that wants to do comedy. He's just starting out in comedy, right? So I go, I got a plan. I even emailed you about this. I go, dude, uh, I'm going to buy joestats.com because it's available. I buy his domain name because he didn't have an email. You know, I mean, he didn't Great have a prank. domain name. Yep. And um, I, uh, I created this uh, web page of him with a swastika on his, on his face. And I, uh. I put a bunch of racist shit on there and everything. I figured I'd... Did you do it? Yes, dude. I left it up there for like a week. And, and uh, then I, I just basically gave him the website. I said, here you go. You get, a new, you get a new website of this whole deal because I wanted to get you back for a week. And he's like, thanks, James. I'm like, yeah, I'm a nice person. You know, here's a web fucking website. <laughs> so now he's got a website. He fucking uploads shit. He's got his video on there. He's got his pictures and stuff. See, James does good. By the end of the podcast, Inman did something right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's a nice guy. I mean, he's funny. I've seen his, I've seen his videos. I've seen his stand-up. Yeah, he's, he's funny. I could talk to you all night, James. Uh, are we... Uh, yeah, we're getting uh, close. i got to check my notes. Banjo Randy is here. Uh, no, we, you wanted to have him play during the uh, podcast. He broke his banjo. Oh, good, because we weren't going to do it anyway. Because okay. if, if we needed to edit it, it makes it fucking impossible. Oh, right. music. Okay. So all right, all said, right. fuck that. But uh, where do we find some good Banjo Randy? If you don't remember or don't know, if, uh, Banjo Randy played the intro and outro on Deadbeat Hero. So I love a banjo. Yeah. And he's also he's played on live the, with me on stage. He's, he's got two songs in the movie, The Unbookables. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't talk about The Unbookables. Yeah, that's right. Well, watch that movie. The Unbookables uh, was a touring idea at first where I have a lot of friends that are uh, fuck ups and just uh, <laughs> can't do anything except the funny part of comedy. They can't, you know, show up on time or at all, or they uh, they're fucked up, or they get arrested, or they have, you know, horrific you know, legal issues or drug problems or <laughs> drinking issues. Yeah. So the idea was to try to bring out, a, you know, a uh, dirty dozen kind of what's another analogy? Yeah, well, I think you get the point. Yeah, it's a it's a road uh, a crap comedy pack. movie. <laughs> So then uh, I'm busy doing something, and Inman meets some producer, and he goes, I want to make a documentary out of the Unbookables, and this guy's going to do it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. I don't care. And me, I, and, me and Norm Wilkerson pulled that off because we didn't know if you were behind it or not. And I'm talking to Norm over the phone. I go, look, Doug's a libertarian. He wants us to do shit on our own. Let's just fucking make this movie. So me, uh, Andy Andrus, and Norm put that tour together, and that guy filmed the whole thing, and we did it because we wanted to fucking do something. And sh just I, first of all, when I said yes, Inman getting anything done, I just assume isn't going to happen. So I go, yes, go ahead, do whatever you got to yeah, do, James. Yeah, and it fucking he finished it, didn't he? Yes, he yeah. did. I was well, I was I was uh, positive uh, in thinking that it would never, never ever out. see the light of day, and I thought that's a good thing. Which uh, I still think <laughs> would have been a good thing. They, they make you the fucking hero of the movie, where you you're the. They made fun of me the whole movie. What are you talking about? Well, well not yeah. the hero, but they make it look the like you're the, the protagonist. Like, yeah. Thank you I for the big know word. I didn't that was going to happen. Well, it's not a bad right. thing. It's just people don't understand. You're the fucking Perry of our windy city heat. <laughs> the the interview you just Perfect. gave. Yes, who's Perry? Don't worry. Don't All worry. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, I, again, if you know the people in it, I enjoyed the Unbookables only like uh, I, you know, because I know everyone. I know the backstory. I know how the film got made. You've toured Everybody with every Sean. single one of them. Everyone likes Sean. Yeah, Sean a, Rouse is he fucking has the brilliant best in it. Bit in that movie, but it makes no sense. Like as a comic, it bothers the shit out of me because it doesn't make any sense why this tour would all of a sudden not have some people but have new people and be here and there and yeah. who's booking this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, but I one got, day, yeah, one day we'll read. Do it. <laughs> They're gonna re-edit the film. It's dead. There's no saving that thing. But yeah. go watch it on Netflix and see all you these don't people like we're talking about. You didn't like my Greyhound Diary. You don't. You, what do you mean don't, I didn't? I love your Greyhound Diaries. Yeah, you like it now, but when I first showed you the Greyhound Diary, you're like, eh, this is stupid. And I'm like, I no, I'm gonna turn it into the thing, and then whatever. 
when I first when you didn't think I've it, offered you nothing but positive after it came out you, yeah when, when you, you realized it was good you know when the I movie, realized it existed no listen everybody don't listen to dog just watch the movie make up your own mind yeah, 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 but now that they've heard you, they have a little bit more insight as to some of the people. They know Andy Andrist, who's in it. Andy. They might know Sean Rouse, Sean Rouse. who's in it. Christine Levine. Christine. Brendan yes. Walsh. Brendan oh, Walsh. Brendan Walsh. Brett Erickson. Uh, they're, they're there for a minute. Brett Erickson. Travis yeah. Lipsky. Lipsky, for another reason. We made the movie for you, dog, because you created the unbookable, so we figured here's our chance to make a movie, and we made a fucking you movie. You made the unbookables unbrandable. <laughs> I gotta pee. Can I go? Yeah, well, let's uh, let's shut this down. Uh, here, no, I want, you can leave that here. We're at the end of this uh, five week fucking endless leg. We got six or seven more shows to go. I wanted to thank. Uh, uh, okay, then get the mic in there. You're not gonna use that, are you? Now we're not rolling. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's some, uh, some minor health issues on this tour. Uh, they just keep piling up, but uh, we've been lucky to find doctors in weird places. Oh, so Dr. Jeremy last night in St. Louis for my new vernal hernia, vertal, for ver- ventral. Uh, ventral, ventral, her- oh, I'm just a fucking giant torso of hernia. <laughs> and Dr. Joe with my fucking eye lumps, thank you for helping out. Uh, Joby's got those new uh, T-shirts up at uh, the Deathpool website. Stanhope Celebrity Deathpool DS DSCDP. Doug Stanhope Celebrity Deathpool DSCDP.com. Get the new T-shirts; they're cool as shit. And uh, completely f- stop it. Turn it the fuck off. God damn it. <laughs> God, you're mean. Yeah, that's in men's seat, baby. Yeah, I was just going okay. to. There's your cider. Oh, cool. I just put it in. Okay, wait. So, so the unbookables. I think it's not on Netflix. No. Okay. So I said it was. Well, you can. It's it's not on Netflix. Go out and find it. It lives in the. Uh, it's on BitTorrent and it's on the website if you want to buy it on unbookables. Uh, the unbookablesmovie dot com. All right. All right. Well, there's that. You're we good. fixed that. And jamesinman dot com. James Inman has some really funny. Uh, shit, uh, the, you have a legendary old city council meeting that uh-huh, you spoke right, at right. that's fucking genius. Uh-huh. Uh, where he snapped it. Yeah, city James council. Inman City Council, you can find that. And then you just did a new one where, oh yeah, there's the one of you getting punched by a chick yeah, on stage. Uh-huh, yeah. and, that's at the Underground, right? In yeah, Seattle? Yeah, uh-huh, the old comedy yeah, Underground. I got punched on stage, yeah. And then this new one he just did. <laughs> have you, did I, I don't know if I showed Chaley. Yeah. I told you about it. He's, he, he's at his uncle's eulogy. Uh, a funeral, giving a <laughs> eulogy with his dad in the front row, talking about how much cooler his uncle was than his dad, pointing to his dad. Yeah, my my dad bought us a skateboard, but Uncle Joe had four wheelers, that yeah. kind of shit. It's this brilliant fucking chunk of footage. But find all that at jamesinman.com. Is that all that all those well, clips on, on your on site? my YouTube page, James Inman's YouTube page or whatever. Yeah, all right. And you wanted to promote uh, the, uh, the JLDS of uh, Jesus Loves Doug Stanhope, which was a domain name that Norm bought and he ran the forum for years. Then he gave it up, and now Little Mikey's running the goddamn. All right, thing. T- this is a lot of unnecessary right, information right. the, the, for the people. The, I, it's the forum link on my website. It goes to this forum, right. which I, I abandoned years ago. But you some, come around every now and then. Like once every year or two, I'll brilliant. stop it and go, wow, this thing is still exists? Doug, you have some smart fans. Some of your fans are brilliant. Private Prozac, uh, Chinger, uh, fucking, uh, there's another guy on there that's a big Nietzsche fan. I'm not saying that there's not brilliant people there. It's just with, when it, with the, once MySpace came and then fucking Facebook and now Twitter, yeah. and I'm 1,600 deep in unanswered emails. But this, and, this so is a place I can't where get can't, to all that shit. This is a place where n- you can't get banned or booted the only rule is don't post kitty porn and people let you post whatever you want there's giant huge arguments on there about the- i know i'm just saying i don't have after the shit i have to uh-huh. do yeah i don't have time don't to have go time to go there yeah i my my laptop is a sink full of dirty dishes uh-huh. that i just avoid 
getting to the stuff I guys, have yeah, to do. I know. Some of these guys are good writers. It's no more fun. Like well, the baiting well. shit. I, when I used to do the baiting, that would take like 14 hour days just to get one printable bait. And I go, like, how did I have that much fucking time? How long did it how take? How did my life change so much that I. How long did it take you to write that book, Best of Baiting? Well, I was baiting for God knows how long. And then And again, you do you do full days of that. Just trying to get you'd get a great one that went halfway and the guy caught on to the fact that yeah. you're fucking with him and he drops out. Are you and then you try another and, book? No, I'm not when, if I ever have fucking fourteen hour days to kill baiting again, Dude, yeah, maybe I'll do a part two, but you no. You have some time off. You work you know, one thing about you is you're a workaholic. You actually work on your act. I mean, Bingo told me that, oh yeah, he's out in the the football room again, going over his act. You know, you actually work on your act. Well, I have to because people show up to see me now. They want to. They want to see new material. Yeah, they're 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 not there. It's not like the old days when we started, where any asshole off the street is just coming in to see comedy. Right. Now I have to actually deliver for people who know me. Right, right. So uh-huh. it's a, yeah. That's when comedy stopped being fun. Yeah. That's when you had to be good at it. But you can do it Fuck in your sleep now. I mean, just about. No. No. Actually, the older you get, the more feeble your brain gets. Bingo sits be- the back of every show and anything that I riff off the top of my drunken head or add to a bit, she writes on a yellow legal pad. Now, you gonna, and to I told tell Randy about your that, uh, English uh, monarchy bit. Are you going to do that tonight? No. Dude, did Brian Hennigan help you write that bit? No. Does he help you write any of your bits? No, I mean, well, occasionally. Uh, Isn't he the fucking banter best? back and forth? Like, oh, what's a good way to say that? He's great for words, where you go, what's another word for this? Yeah, but he's got a big admit, vocabulary. He's probably the greatest manager on the face of the planet. You lucked out by meeting that guy. He's fucking amazing. He's fucking great. Yeah, I know. He's, I, I love the guy, but he hates my guts. But <laughs> He hates everything. Oh, he hates everything. <laughs> okay. That's why we get along so good. We're both m- miserable, <laughs> like, spiteful, yeah. sniping men. Exactly. All right. <laughs> what, was, what was the other thing we were going to I think that's it. Think uh, that's it. Oh, you're, you have a podcast. Right. I have a podcast, Drunk Idiots Podcast. I got three of them up, but we, I've got seven of them in the can, and I, <laughs> I haven't posted them yet. But I, I'm just... You know, I'm going to post one here pretty soon. All right. You know, so check that out. It's on my website. All right. Yeah, find James Inman at uh, James be, Inman being walked out the back door of a club near you. <laughs> yes. All right. I'm sorry to Chilkoot Charlie's. Does that sound like a real apology? You don't have to apologize. Yeah. No one's upset about it. No. Do you know how bad a track record I have for every comic that I have... Uh, suggested they book up there. <laughs> I am about like two for ten. Two uh, for ten. You're you're zero for three in the most recent. In the recent, yeah, yeah no, zero for three. Uh, so you Rick you'd... Shapiro fucking walked the house nightly. I don't Just think did... he made it through the week. He made he? it. Uh, well, part of the problem was also we had a uh, the person that was uh, doing promotions at the time booked Rick Shapiro in a non-smoking room and thought <laughs> thought that he wouldn't smoke. I mean, he sees the sign that says 250 bucks and lights the match off of it. Oh, I mean, God. it's not it's not so that cost us a lot. We had to we had to pay for the deposit on the room or whatever they do. I didn't even think he smoked cigarettes. It was yeah, he had he did two shows and basically it was uh hey, this isn't working. He goes, "Yeah, I don't think so either." And we paid him for the full week and even Duran says, "Hey, stay at the condo that we got you in now." Stay for the week. He goes, nah, just go home. And they, they rebooked his flight and flew him out of there early. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've, um, I've sent up. It's, it doesn't work It's sometimes. not a good room for comics. Comics. And those are generally the guys I send. No, no. They'll, they'll do fine. Nope. Yeah, Crickets. It's, it's really, Crickets or walkouts. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you got to admit, I mean, Alaska has a whole different vibe than the lower fucking 49 I remember yeah. Sean Rouse went up, and uh, I called ahead of time. I go, because this bar is legendary. It's just a barrage of shots coming to the stage from the minute you walk up. Mm-hmm. And I called the bar, and I said, listen, Sean Rouse, you, you're not the guy you want to be giving shots, shots to. to. 
don't give them shots. Oh and they thought I was being sarcastic. Oh, no. Like, and th- like th- no, like, like a wink and a nod. Yeah. It's like, hey, don't send any shots to my buddy Rouse. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was ugly. Yeah, he was one that they, they had to actually go up and tell him where he was and walk him off the stage by his elbows. Well, so I don't feel so bad now. Sean Rouse got walked off well, the stage. Well, so I didn't want I... you to not feel bad till okay. the end of the podcast. I, I, wanted not... you, I wanted you to feel bad the whole podcast uh, and yeah, then let well. you down. Nice. I'm not the comic that Sean is, so whatever. Uh, not many are. That's a podcast. All right. That's it. I need to, it's before the I show, need, I'm yeah. going to go bum a cigarette. Yeah, they've the already started uh, seating the audience, so it's about to get time to break down. All right. All right, yeah. We are playing a lot of weird oh, fucking... Jesus. We played more shit towns on this tour than the shit town tour, but some fun ones. So if you live in some place that I'd never think to go, but is actually cool... Yeah, shoot a uh, shoot an email with that town and the fucking name. Fayetteville, Arkansas, I would have never known as a cool it's fucking a cool town. town. Hattiesburg, Mississippi, mm-hmm. I would have never known. Even Mobile, Alabama, I would have... Uh, yeah, that was Athens. fun. That was good. Had, had some fun. Hey, what about your... Uh, Athens, everyone fucking knows. Give your email address. Uh, Doug at DougStanhope.com. Or just go to the website and hit the uh, business uh, email contact. That's the same thing. Hey, by the way, uh, if you go to DougStanhope.com, the uh, June and August dates are now up, and uh, they'll be adding to those. All right. Well, either we'll come back drunk at the end of this, if we come think of stuff uh, and have time to do it, or we'll just play the matoid. time. You've been listening to the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Recorded in the green room, Kansas City Improv, with Doug Stanhope, Jane Zinman, Bingo, and Greg Shaley. Recorded and edited by me, Greg Shaley. Opening music by Mishka Shubale. Party time by The Mad Toy. Both available on iTunes. Keep up with all of Doug's upcoming dates at DougStanhope.com. Thanks for listening. Sun eats your eats, it's party time. <laughs> laugh your laugh, sun eats your eats, it's party time.